Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So uh, today uh, uh, we will talk about this uh, family herpes uh, file ID. You know this uh, initial uh, taxonomy classes, we talk about this particular family, uh, the meaning of the family. Uh, this is an, a very large group of uh, DNA virus and it says that every species in this uh, art, uh, they are having at least one major disease caused by the herpes virus. So you can talk about have at least one major disease uh, caused by this uh, particular group of viruses. The herpes, uh, the, 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 the meaning of the herpes uh, derived from the Greek word herpin. Herpin meaning is uh, creeping movement, very slow and unnoticed uh, movement. So this particular virus uh, uh, had a characteristics of undergo latency. So once it enter into the body, mm, the virus may not produce uh, the disease immediately. So uh, whenever a person will develop the disease, uh, nobody can uh, predict it. Uh, uh, the virus usually undergoes some sort of latency and uh, the viral genome get integrated with the host cell chromosome episomally. Okay? Unlike the retroviruses where the direct integration takes place here, the herpes virus genome, they may remain just like a plasmid and episomally it get attached to the host cell chromosome. And under certain factors, this uh, uh, herpes virus genome flares up and new virus particles are produced and uh, we can see some overt disease. So this is a characteristics. So because of the very slow progression and uh, the disease, uh, this, this group of viruses are called as a herpes, that means the creeping movement. Uh, so latency is a uh, uh, very important aspect of uh, this group of infection, virus infection. As you know, uh, if uh, let me see other things we can say it's a non productive uh, uh, persistent infection, persistent non productive. The virus may remain hidden inside uh, some uh, inside certain tissues where the cells of the immune system and the antibody don't reach them easily. They will they say they can uh, hide inside uh, certain specific specialized tissues and uh, Time to time, the flares up uh, and produces overt disease. So this is a group of uh, large uh, DNA virus uh, category, both Asper virus, uh, Fox virus, and herpes. This true, this three, including the Irido viruses, we consider them as the large uh, DNA viruses. So they, they, they typically have an icosahedral symmetry and these icosahedrons are typical icosahedrons having 162 capsomer uh, to form this uh, capsid layer. And inside you will get a double-stranded uh, uh, DNA molecule, uh, which is uh, quite uh, bigger in comparison to uh, the other viruses. So they carry a lot of genetic information as well as uh, the same thing happened. Most of the very important proteins uh, uh, were found in this group of uh, viruses. Uh, however, they cannot independently grow in the cytoplasm. So this virus, they grow and replicate in the nucleus of the infected host cell, which is a typical uh, DNA virus. So uh, uh, the, this icosahedral symmetry is covered with uh, a layer of protein that call as the tegument. Tegument is an uh, substance, extra uh, proteinaceous substance deposited uh, in between this envelope and the capsid layer of the virus that gives us uh, additional rigidity to the uh, virus. And they have having certain functions and roles in the replication of the virus. And they uh, replicate inside the host cell nucleus and they uh, bud from the nuclear membrane. As a result, they carry some part of the nuclear membrane and uh, those uh, nuclear membranes are encored with certain glycoprotein spikes. And this uh, the structures of an envelope of herpes virus. 
this is a real electron microscopy both sides you can see how they appear and at the center it is a schematic diagram of this uh, herpes virus so uh, this uh, uh, the icosahedral capsids uh, uh, having 150 actions and 12 phantoms typical of an icosahedron uh, of one cc to capsomer. So uh, this uh, virus is, these are some of the electron microscopic uh, view of, of the virus, uh, purified virus uh, material. Uh, and this is another uh, picture showing uh, how big might be the tegument, uh, which is usually not present in other group of viruses. Here, a very thick uh, layer of proteins get deposited uh, surrounding the capsids called a tegument. So this virus typically enter uh, through the cell cytoplasm and then the virus, they uh, migrate, uh, the nucleus and migrate to the uh, nucleus of the infected host cells where all sorts of replications are taken place. So at uh, three different... Okay, okay, thank you. So at uh, three different stages, the transcriptions occur. They have done this, uh, uh, the alpha, beta, and gamma transcriptions, and gammas are uh, uh, mainly the late uh, messenger RNA, and that leads to uh, formation of structural protein in the cytoplasm. Again, the protein, capsid proteins, they migrate to the nucleus where the assembly takes place, and finally they get released. So in this uh, um, uh, group of virus, uh, they go for a uh, process, it's called the RNA splicing. So, uh, uh, so on the sub uh, long uh, stretch of messenger RNA are transcribed initially, and those are subsequently uh, spliced to a uh, sort of length messenger RNA, and individual proteins are produced. So this is one strategy, of course, uh, that uh, will not give much emphasis about the uh, transcription strategies, rather we try to know like how this uh, the replications occur inside a host cell. So uh, the DNA virus, uh, uh, as uh, we described it, early protein and early messenger RNAs are produced, and uh, the late messenger RNA will give it the structural protein. This structural protein will form in the cytoplasm again, will migrate to the nucleus, and there the assembly will take place. And finally, it comes out of the host cell as uh, a nuclear membrane. As a result, the envelope is similar to that of the host cell, nuclear membrane. And finally, through certain uh, tracts or channels, they come sort of whole cell. So in this process, what happened is uh, infected uh, cells, uh, just an infected cell, the plasma membrane fusion takes place, and that gives rise to a typical cytopathic effect, what we call as the syncytia formations will come in to uh, the next slide. So uh, this virus, uh, they are uh, not very much stable in the environment. So as a result, what happened uh, for disease transmission, a close contact is essentially needed. The virus cannot survive for long uh, period outside the animal body and get uh, inactivated. So they cannot withstand uh, around the pH and they are level to heat and desiccation. So, uh, once it is excreted by an individual, the virus outside the animal body uh, get inactivated uh, very quickly. So a close contact uh, is needed for this transmission. Okay. So since it's an envelope virus, envelope is essentially needed. Unlike the African swine fever, where we talked that uh, without the envelope, also the virus can produce uh, the infection, but here this is not so. So lipid solvent, if they can destroy the envelope layer, the virus will be inactivated. Now, if you try to see that uh, the propagation of virus, then one thing is very clear, the virus, they prefer to grow uh, from the natural host, except one or two uh, viruses. Remember, uh, majority of the herpes virus, they uh, prefer to grow in the cells uh, derived from their natural host, like bovine in bovine kidneys, okay? The bosines in peak. Uh, likewise, uh, they, 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 they prefer to grow in the cell culture derived from the natural host. Okay. However, few members uh, can be propagated in the uh, uh, chicken embryo uh, for isolation purpose. Not only the avian, even certain mammalian herpes viruses can also be grown in the 
uh, chicken uh, embryo, embryo into chicken egg. Okay, so we'll come to these uh, uh, different uh, groups like alpha, beta, and gamma, the important herpes virus uh, uh, that we're going to discuss uh, along into this three group alpha, beta, and gamma. So some sort of uh, cytopathic effect uh, or differences we could see where the alpha viruses they are rapidly cytopathic uh, uh, pathogenic and produces typical changes in the infected cell. Uh, in comparison to beta and gamma, they are slowly cytopathogenic and uh, uh, both alpha and beta means all herpes viruses they characteristically form the intranuclear inclusions which are uh, diagnostically important. The last point, what uh, it is um, mainly concerned for us is that the herpes viruses, they undergo latency. And uh, once the animals, animal is latently infected, it is extremely difficult to find out and trace of those animals and they become a source of infection uh, at a little part. So, uh, the after entry and uh, uh, propagation, initial propagation inside the host, uh, this uh, herpes viruses, they try to uh, localize themselves in certain nerves, particularly trisaminal and uh, sciatic nerve, they localized and they undergo latency. So uh, persistent infections with periodic or continuous setting occur in almost all herpes virus infection. That is the reasons why it is uh, extremely difficult to uh, eradicate the disease from the population. However, we have having the effective vaccines through which we can control it. So some sort of uh, irregular internuclear inclusions are showing it in this picture. And in these three uh, slides, uh, clearly it indicates this is what we call as the syncytia formation. So in an intact monolayer where all the cells will be growing uniformly, the herpes virus growth will lead to uh, fusion of plasma membrane of adjacent cell. When many cell plasma membrane fusions will uh, occur, then we can notice all the nuclei will be aggregating at a place and a large empty space, as we can see it here. Large empty space will develop in the cell culture monolayer. So this particular cytopathic effect is designated as syncytia formation, which is typical of herpes virus infection. Besides, in coriolantric membrane root of inoculation, when we inoculate uh, some members, particularly the infectious laryngotracheitis and Marek disease virus, they produce certain POC lesion. This is called POC, P-O-C-K, POC lesion. POC is uh, uh, also formed in the um, POC infection. So here also, the discrete uh, necrotic uh, patches are developed in the coriolantric membrane. Uh, and this is called as the POC lesions, the characteristics of some herpes virus when they grown in the embryonated chicken egg. So uh, this way, um, the herpes viruses are uh, isolated in the laboratory uh, condition for diagnosis purpose. So a um, lot of uh, uh, classification changes uh, have been taken place. In fact, uh, the, uh, in, in many books, you will get this, uh, the, the Marek disease, which is a uh, tumorogenic herpes virus infraction of poultry. Uh, that's also belonging to this category, oncogenic category. Mm, they earlier were uh, grouped on the gamma herpes viruses as because uh, many members of gamma herpes viruses can produce uh, tumor formation. But later on, it has been reclassified on the basis of its genetic uh, characteristics. The, uh, Marek disease virus has been reclassified into alpha herpes virus to not in the gamma. So in some old textbook, you can see it has been mentioned as the gamma herpes virus, but now we discuss it on the alpha herpes uh, subfamily. So uh, recently, this entire group has been upgraded to an order of herpes viralis uh, that include three families, LO, herpes, and malaco where the herpes variety are important for us. And uh, most of the disease will be discussing under this particular family, which includes three subfamily, alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. As in the previous slide, what we have discussed is alpha herpes viruses are rapidly 
growing and producing a cytopenic effect uh, uh, very quickly in comparison to beta and gamma. They are slowly cytopathogenic. So this uh, members uh, in the table of form will see uh, the important diseases. As we know, if you, if, you, if you see your syllabi also, you'll find this is one family with include maximum disease. Uh, so this alpha herpes virin is soft family. They contain uh, many uh, uh, genus, but uh, some of the genus like uh, very shallow virus genus are uh, important for us. This also, um, this include a uh, bovine disease called bovine alpha herpes virus 1, also uh, named as infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, sort of we call it the IBR, or sometimes we call uh, IPVV, infectious pustular vulvovaginitis. So another infections uh, in bovine, of course, this is a minor infection, so bovine alpha herpes virus 2, it causes uh, a pseudo-lumpy skin disease. As in the previous uh, classes, we talked about the lumpy skin disease. So some of the lesions are produced look like the uh, lumpy skin uh, lesions. That's why this particular uh, disease is called as the pseudo-lumpy skin disease, bovine mammillitis. Very shortly, we discussed it. It's not there in the syllabus. Uh, then in the equine, again, under the very shallow virus genus, uh, they, an important pathogen, this is a very important pathogen of the uh, equine family, the equid alpha herpes virus 1, as well as 4, clinically these two cannot be uh, distinguished separately. They cause this uh, condition called as equine rhinopneumonitis and abuson. So this is a, a major disease in equine species. We're going to discuss about it. So similarly, there is another, it's called postular lesions on the genitalia, coital like xanthema, the name of the disease, it's caused by equid alpha herpes virus uh, 3 and the very shallow virus. So this uh, pseudolumpy skin is on the simplex virus. Then again, coming to the pig, uh, uh, the disease pseudo rabies, also called as the Ozeski's disease. Uh, this is a highly fatal disease in uh, pig and also occur in cattle, sheep, and goat. So uh, they, it is caused by the sweet alpha herpes virus 1 under the genus varicella virus. Similarly, there is an hemorrhagic disease in pop on the uh, color caused by can, uh, canine, uh, canine alpha herpes virus 1. Of course, we're not going to discuss that one. Then on the avian, uh, this is uh, um, uh, infected disease, laryngotracheitis. And recently, it has been uh, given the genus as name as the ILTO virus, infectious laryngotracheitis, ILTO, ILTO virus genus. And cultive organism is Galid alpha herpes virus 1. Okay. So, this is the Marek disease, the tumorogenic uh, uh, infections of poultry under the herpes virus uh, variety family. So it is caused by the Galid alpha herpes virus 2. Both are almost the same. This is 1 and this is 2. The one is causes infectious laryngotracheitis and two causes uh, uh, the Marek disease. However, the genus is different. The infectious laryngotracheitis, the genus is ilto virus, and here it is the Mardi virus. Then a third important disease in Mark, which is caused, uh, the, um, uh, considered to be uh, the most fatal disease in duck, the duck plague that affects all this group of duck and causes a uh, very heavy mortality. It is caused by the anapid alpha herpes virus 1 under the genus Mardi virus. So these names are as for the latest ICTP classification. And uh, besides this, in the beta herpes virus, uh, the reason it, uh, this is called inclusive body rhinitis, and on the gamma, the malignant catarrhal fever. Of course, we are going to discuss about this malignant catarrhal fever. So likewise, the, these are some of the important uh, disease in animals uh, under the herpes variety family. Hopefully, all of you understand the human herpes simplex that causes very painful blister, and all of a sudden uh, it develops. So, uh, development of uh, uh, herpes simplex in uh, infection in human doesn't mean that the person uh, exposed to the virus very recently. It may be uh, many months earlier, maybe a year. So that's the things why we call them the slowly progressive kind of disease, uh, the herpes virus is produced. But once the mature virus particles are producing in the cells, then we can see explosive disease conditions. 
Now coming to the uh, first infection, infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, uh, also called as uh, IVR infection. Uh, this uh, IVR infection, uh, um, this is a common disease in cattle. So first it was detected in 1950 in Colorado and thereafter in all uh, uh, countries the disease has been reported. And in India also, we have recorded this uh, disease. So a few years back, one zero surveillance program was carried out uh, uh, in Mizoram, and there also few animals were found to be uh, IVR positive. However, the, um, the disease incidence and reporting is not uh, uh, very frequent uh, on this IVR infection. So these infections uh, we can describe in two different clinical manifestations, sometimes occurring simultaneously. One is that uh, uh, rhinotracheitis, uh, where the generalized infection, this is the generalized infection where maximum losses occur. At the same time, the infections also occur in a uh, localized form, particularly in the genitalia, where some uh, postular lesions are produced, uh, that is called as the vulvovaginitis or bellanopostitis. So uh, the same organisms are associated with uh, this condition. So the cultivar organism is the bovine alpha herpes virus one, and then as very shallow virus, uh, the alpha herpes virus and the family herpes virus and the order herpes virus. This is that uh, classification scheme. Now, um, this particular virus is again uh, antigenically cross-reacting with the equine herpes virus one. Equine uh, herpes virus one that causes rhinopneumonitis and abortion in equine. Uh, then, if you see that host susceptibility, you find all these group of cattle are uh, susceptible to this infection. So, uh, the disease has also been recorded in other uh, bovine, uh, uh, like uh, goat, swine, as well as uh, water buffalo. Um, the disease has been recorded, including the while uh, ruminant and they may act as a reservoir of the virus. Uh, so if you see the spread, uh, as I say that the all herpes viruses, this common things you will find it, a close contact is essentially needed. Maybe uh, aerosols or through semen may be uh, transmitted, contaminated feed and water recently contaminated with the virus. So by direct contact, the disease spread takes place, okay? So this uh, virus, they uh, under natal conditions, uh, they will enter through the mucosal epithelium and where they will produce this inflammatory uh, reactions in the respiratory tract and uh, even goes up to the bronchioles and um, the animal, they ex exhibit uh, uh, conditions of uh, rhinopneumonitis, uh, uh, rhinitis, excessive uh, nasal ditchers, you'll find it and tracheitis, laryngitis, and this kind of uh, upper respiratory tract infection, you can see, uh, including the conjunctivitis, okay? So at this particular stage, the virus are trapped by the leukocytes, and it may sometimes invade to the central nervous systems and producing some nerve and symptoms. Uh, uh, and then, in pregnant animal, the virus are carried to the placenta where uh, the animal may exhibit the symptoms of uh, abortion, okay? Uh, however, the genital form uh, of the disease is uh, not a generalized type of infections where the virus, uh, they can produce localized lesions in the uh, genital tract in both male and female. And they are not associated with abortion. This is a misconception. Many times people think that the genital form causes the uh, abortion. It's not like that. The generalized the respiratory forms only mainly causes the abortion and systemic infection, whereas the genital form is uh, more or less localized, uh, painful lesions are produced in the genitalia. Okay. So, uh, uh, these things like focal necrosis and yellow white parcels are occurring. This is the uh, genital form, and this is a localized infection. It's not a generalized. Generalized infections are seen when the animal they repeat the signs of uh, uh, rhinitis and uh, fever, and then uh, the virus are circulated uh, in the blood. 
So uh, in pregnant animal, the abortion that occur at four to seven months, this is one characteristic, and this is because of the uh, generalized infection, not because of localized infection. And uh, uh, the recovered animal, of course, uh, the mortality has not been recorded. It's not a fatal disease. However, it causes total production loss in animal. And the recovered animal, uh, the virus will uh, undergo latency in sciatic and trisaminal nerve. Please record it and underline it. This is an important point. So the virus has got the tendency to undergo latency in uh, sciatic and trisaminal nerve. It's quite interesting why this virus is selecting this uh, nerve. Because we know that the nerve uh, uh, cells uh, or the ganglions are not uh, uh, in the reach of the uh, reactive lymphocytes or the antibodies cannot reach those places. So very safely the virus can uh, reside. And this is a sort of uh, latency how they can uh, cause uh, in infection. So uh, the respiratory form, uh, because of this uh, ulcerations in the mucous membrane, sometimes the diphtheritic membrane, you see the membrane can form in the respiratory tract and they may slough up and uh, that leads to uh, drilling of uh, uh, hemorrhagic mucus uh, through the nasal passages is an outcome uh, clinical symptom in severe uh, cases. Okay, uh, all the upper respiratory tract infections, um, uh, lesions like uh, lacrimation, dyspnea, bile conjunctivitis are very common uh, outcome of this infection, right? So uh, diarrhea in abortion, this is again because of uh, the uh, infections in the intestinal tract. So what uh, it has been seen is that the mortality may reach up to 10 persons and that also in uh, complicated cases. However, the morbidity is uh, very, very high. Uh, the exposed uh, animal, there is a huge production loss uh, taken place. So the genital forms are sometimes uh, designated as infectious postula vulvovaginitis or balanopostitis. So I can record these two uh, names. So it's a synonym of this IVR infection or more precisely considered genital form of IVR. So here, uh, as I said, the localized lesions are produced. Now coming to the laboratory diagnosis of this infection, the clinical signs and symptoms gives us some information, not concrete, but some information we can get it uh, about the IVR. So uh, diagnosis is totally dependent on demonstration of antigens, its isolations, or antibody-based detection uh, for specific uh, viruses. So the different clinical samples you can collect it. One such is called paired serum sample. I think you understand this is quite important in endemic area. From paired serum sample, we collect the serum sample from the same animal at two uh, time interval, two different time period, okay? And usually week or two weeks. Say today you have collected and after 14 days, the second serum sample you can collect it and try to see the antibody level. And if it is increasing then, you can see the progressive disease uh, there in the animal. So in certain cases, this has become very much relevant for uh, the screening and diagnosis. So if there is any mortality, then uh, we can collect the internal organs for detection. And of course, in abortion cases, the total and fetal liver, we can collect it for uh, antigen detection. So as I said that uh, uh, the primary bovine uh, cells uh, gives us uh, 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 are uh, suitable for isolation of this virus, and they typically produce the syncytia formations with intranuclear intrusions, which is uh, diagnostically important. Okay, so uh, the serological tests include the SDPT, FAT, ELISA, and uh, antibody detection again, ELISA, and virus nucleation test uh, can be performed. So the project directorate, animal disease monitoring and surveillance, it's called PD Edmos. Now it is renamed as NIVEDI, National Institute of Veterinary Epidemiology. Um, it's located at Bengaluru. Now that the institute, the ICR Institute, they come up with an uh, ELISA test, a within biotin ELISA uh, kit for zero detections of IVR infections at a low cost kit. Uh, this can be used for uh, detecting the animal. So uh, this is important, again, uh, if you maintain the animals for uh, breeding purpose, for collection of semen in the 
uh, yeah, simple. So the animal should be totally screened for IBR. And if it is so, any animal is showing positive uh, antibody response, and immediately we have to segregate the animal as because uh, there is no point of keeping or uh, vaccinating and keeping the animals uh, uh, because uh, if the infection has already occurred, the animals, uh, the latency will occur and uh, time to time they will save the virus uh, and then become a source of infection. Then, yeah, PCR based uh, detection is again uh, suitable techniques for uh, these diagnosis. So, uh, control of the disease uh, is based on the live attenuated vaccine uh, that is available. Uh, as well as uh, uh, this live attenuated vaccines, uh, interestingly, in a pregnant animal, it may cause this uh, abortion sometimes. That's why instead of uh, intramuscular inoculation, in a pregnant animal, intranasal uh, installations are given. So, when it is given intranasally, the abortions are not seen rather than giving intramuscular directly. So, uh, certain vaccination regimes are given it here. And uh, the, of course, it's not at large, the vaccine is available everywhere, but in certain uh, uh, states of India, they, this vaccine's uh, vaccination practice is there for controlling the infection. Okay. So uh, other control measures we need to consider, like if any animal exhibits the disease, then uh, we should uh, segregate the animal. There is no point of keeping a recovered animal uh, on the farm because they will be a source of infection in the future. More particularly in the cement collection center, we have to take care about it. Okay. So, immunitis uh, and abortion for quite a long period, it was considered to be a uh, same positive organism, but uh, it has been seen two different viruses. One is that uh, equid rhino uh, alpha, uh, equid alpha herpes virus uh, one, uh, which is mainly associated with the equine abortion, and sometimes it is described as abortion storm. Uh, since its uh, first records in 1925, has uh, spread it to all over the globe and. Uh, the, the the cases of equine rhinopneumonitis as well as the abortion has been reported in India also. So uh, the other one, the equid alpha herpes virus uh, four, uh, which is uh, uh, mainly associated with uh, rhinopneumonitis, severe rhinopneumonitis, uh, rhinitis and pneumonia. That's called rhinopneumonitis. Rhinitis means. Uh, uh, inflammation of the respiratory uh, upper respiratory tract uh, that leading to constant uh, nasal uh, secretion and uh, pneumonia. Yes, everybody understand function of the lung. And then um, these two condition and these two viruses, but uh, uh, frequently indistinguishable. Uh, I mean, equine uh, equid uh, alpha herpes virus of, of uh, one uh, and the four uh, both. Uh, may be associated with uh, this uh, symptoms of uh, rhinopneumonitis in a person. However, these are two different viruses identified under this uh, very slow virus uh, genus. So uh, the equine, they are the natural host uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the folds, uh, the, the, the fatality is uh, high, very high in folds because of this. Uh, rhinopneumonitis uh, condition. However, uh, in adults, uh, we could see a condition called as the abortion storm. Storm in a sense, like if uh, the virus infection starts in a particular uh, farm, uh, then um, or uh, a particular area, then a large number of animal will uh, abort at a time, that's called abortion storm. Uh, uh, many animals will show the, uh, they will abort, and uh, um, that uh, particular conditions when many animals at a time will cause abortions. We can say it's just like a storm. This abortion will occur. At the same time, uh, certain passages of the animal also might uh, be the signs of uh, encephalitis, some incoordinations and staggering gait. Uh, we can see and. Uh, Basically, this disease they uh, transmit by direct contact. As I said, that herpes virus is a close contact is essentially needed. 
So the, uh, uh, the, the, the carrier animal or the affected animal, they excrete the virus uh, through secretions and in contact animal make it infection. So if you go to the pathogenesis, then you'll find basically this virus, uh, they, 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 they uh, cause this uh, endothelial damage, vascular epithelium get damaged. And when this vascular epithelium get damaged, then we could see some sort of edematous swelling in the uh, brain, as well as uh, ischemic conditions may occur, blood clotting that takes place in the um, blood vessels supplying to the brain. So because of these conditions, uh, we could see some of the um, uh, neurological signs and symptoms uh, in the animal. It's not because of this uh, nerve cells are affected. There is no nerve involvement. Basically, it occurring in epithelial cells, this infection. Mm. However, the same things happen in the pregnant mare in the placental blood vessels. If uh, the hemorrhages will occur, then that leads, leads to the abortion condition. So, um, during these abortions, uh, uh, sometimes it gets putrefied. If it's the early stage of the pregnancy, if uh, infections occur, then we could see some putrefications in the fetus. This, uh, However, in the five to seven months is the usual time where the uh, abortions are seen in uh, uh, pregnant uh, mares. And then, at the same time, the animal also solves the respiratory tract uh, infections that leads to uh, profuse uh, serous nasal ditchers, including the rhinitis condition, uh, become mycopurulent. Uh, and then bronchopneumonia, this is the condition, bronchopneumonia, severe bronchopneumonia may produce, and that may lead to uh, high mortality in poles. So uh, these are some of the clinical symptoms of uh, rhinitis, pharyngitis, and then cough that develop, and then in the pregnant mares, the abortion is a very common feature, that's why it is called as when uh, rhinopneumonitis and abortion condition. Mild epoxy, as I said, uh, this is because of uh, the inflammatory uh, things that happen, edematous swelling that occur in the brain tissue may lead to uh, incoordination and epoxy. Of course, this is revertible. Then sometimes the posterior paralysis also because of the pressure putting into the nerve uh, because of the edematous swelling. And this is basically the, uh, the endothelial lines, uh, the lining cells, the blood vessels are damaged. So uh, the necrotic foci in the liver of aborted fetus is a feature in the diagnostic it is important. Uh, in the laboratory diagnosis uh, of the disease, uh, the clinical signs and symptoms gives us some information about the disease, however, not uh, the ultimate. Uh, so it, uh, we have to go for uh, confirmation of the virus in the laboratory. And for that, we need to collect the uh, samples, which may be the antimortem as well as the postmortem sample. So antimortem sample basically it is that uh, swab samples of metal secreted uh, and then saturated blood, you can collect it um, where we can detect the virus. And most of the time, the virus is a cell associated. So um, in, the, in the coffee pot, we can very well detect the presence of the virus. However, in the uh, folds uh, or in the uh, aborted fetuses, we can uh, collect these uh, internal organs for detection of the virus. So, uh, intranuclear inclusion is one of the features. So, by this topological sections, we can detect it. However, the diagnosis mainly based on isolation and identification of the virus, and, and that can be done in the uh, fetal kidney cell culture. As you know, the typical pathogenicity um, uh, exhibited in the cell culture is the cis-sacial formation. So um, that cytopathic effect, uh, we can uh, guess the presence of the virus. However, confirmatory detections of uh, is that based on LIS and VNT test. So uh, virus neutralization test can be performed in the serum sample and the antibody detection method. However, ELISA tests, ELISA tests are available in the market uh, for detection of the antigen rapid detection, and this is considered to be most reliable and accurate kind of diagnosis. 
Then, uh, look, as we know that about the PCA techniques, uh, uh, very rapidly and using a simple uh, nasopharyngeal swabs is uh, sufficient for uh, confirmatory detection by PCR. So very rapidly and accurately, even the type specific PCR, we can perform it to uh, detect the, the equid alpha hyperbaric one and four specific primer, we can use it and it can be detected. Or otherwise, both in pulp and can also be checked. That's the equine uh, rhinoneumonitis and abortion condition caused by this uh, herpes virus. So coming to the control and prevention, uh, effective vaccines are available. And these vaccines are basically made uh, with the live attenuated as well as inactivated. The same logic here, the live attenuated are preferred in non-pregnant, inactivated are preferred in the pregnant. So they can give uh, very good protections uh, against this infection. Uh, however, there is a concern that if uh, there is any recovered animal from the outbreak, if it is there, it is always better to isolate uh, those animals, the recovered animal, as because it may lead to a uh, sort of uh, latency and they may become a source of infection. And in fact, this is what happening in the areas where the disease outbreak uh, are seen. Those recovered animals become the source of uh, infection. So that also we need to take care. And basically, this particular disease that uh, recorded in the sequence. This is now, as I said, that uh, the herpes virality family is uh, one such a group of uh, viruses. Almost all animal species they will have at least one major disease caused by the herpes viruses. So uh, it's uh, uh, infections that basically primarily we see in the pig, the pseudorabies infection. However, uh, the disease also occur in cattle, dog, uh, and even the rabbit, goat, sheep. Um, accidentally, uh, the disease may uh, spill and may cause this uh, clinical manifestation. And the clinical manifestation that we see in uh, cattle as well as in the dog uh, is somewhat similar to that of uh, the rabies, where the animal uh, shows some sort of madness or severe itching. And that itching may be up to such an extent that the animal may mutilate its own skin by biting because of the intense pruritus. Mm, so that's what we call it's a mad itch conditions, particularly we see it in the bovines, uh, friends in the bovine, the mad itch condition, right? So uh, infectious bulbar paralysis is another uh, uh, synonym of the disease. And basically this condition we see in the rabbit, experimentally if we inoculate the virus into the rabbit, uh, they saw some uncontrolled bulbar or uh, the eyeball uh, movement. That's what we call as the infectious bulbar paralysis. Then uh, some other, like in, 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 in Germany, they call it the juke paste uh, infections and pseudoreg, which is again the same name as the uh, rabies or pseudolysa. Lysa virus is the genus of the, the rabies virus. So sometimes it's called the pseudolysa. So, so many different names are there. So uh, long back then, the Hungarian scientist Olszewski in 1902 has identified, but the cultive organism was detected by the later part. So it has been seen that the disease is uh, worldwide in prevalent. Uh, in India, there are reports of pseudorabies, but uh, it's not as frequent as recorded uh, the other uh, viral infection of swine. So um, rarely we see some uh, reporting of pseudorabies virus. So exactly we can say that uh, the disease is not prevalent, maybe underreported. There, may, there is a possibility that uh, this is may remain underreported. Uh, some idea probably they have never screened or uh, detected the disease. And such from the state of Mizoram, we have not recorded any pseudorabies uh, till now. Uh, probably may get missed some point, maybe possible. However, uh, it is recorded, outbreaks is reported in India. So the culture organism is the sweet alpha herpes virus one and the genus varicella virus. So uh, single positive organisms, uh, 
associated with these conditions and if you'll find the primary host as well as the reservoir is the peak where uh, the virus is mainly uh, harboring and localized and may remain in the latent infection. So accidentally it may occur in other species, cattle, sheep, goat, dog, cat, they may also uh, pick up the infections and so clinical manifestations. But uh, however, it says that this uh, domestic animals rarely they, they take any part in transmission of the disease. Mainly transmissions occur from pigs only. So if we come to the mode of spread and we'll find this, again here, the direct contact. Direct contact is a uh, mode of transmissions. A virus uh, rarely can survive in the environment uh, long period. So close contact is also always needed for disease transmission. So here again, this uh, carrier status is an important feature, the latency. So adult animal latently may uh, get the infections and um, they may set the virus time to time and become a source of infection for uh, other. So uh, uh, contaminated feed and water in the bedding and the instruments in a, a big sty may be a source of uh, transmission. However, uh, there are certain Study, uh, study also revealed that uh, uh, some of the, uh, the small marsupials, uh, uh, they also can transmit the uh, infection from one form to the other, particularly the phase of outbreak only, rat, mice, they may uh, spread the disease. So the disease is very severe in period, up to 100% mortality has been reported. In the adult, of course, uh, the mortality is not high. But in the piglet, it may reach up to 100% mortality. Adults, mainly the pregnant animals, we can see the signs of abortions and some of the neurological symptoms. Of course, this virus, they infect the nerves. So once they entered through the mucous membrane, mainly through contact mucous membrane, respiratory route or the oral route, the virus may enter. And the virus become cell associated and they disseminated into the body that leads to very high rise of temperature. That's the first potential manifestation of the disease we could see. And thereafter, it will start developing uh, respiratory signs like uh, pharyngitis, uh, tonsillitis, and then um, respiratory difficulties. Uh, these are the areas where uh, the virus will replicate in the esophagus, pharynx, trachea, tonsils, epithelial cells and uh, causes uh, the inflammatory reactions and the clinical manifestation is uh, similar to that of the first affected. Uh, from the mouth cavity, again, the virus can enter uh, uh, through peripheral nerves and passes centripetally to the brain. So this virus is neurotropic again. They can cause uh, degenerative changes uh, uh, in the uh, uh, central nervous system and that leads to uh, development of uh, neurological signs and symptoms like head pressing, staggering gait, and incoordinations, uh, which uh, frequently we can see. So, uh, in 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 in, in um, uh, cattle and uh, goat, uh, we can see the intense pruritus. Even in the dog, also they so intense pruritus, itching of the skin, and they rub their skin violently against the neurox surfaces and uh, that's, uh, they exhibit the signs of uh, uh, rabies. That's why it is called the pseudo rabies. As I said that in pregnant cells, uh, the transplacental infections lead to a condition called as mummification or fetalary absorption. Usually at the early stage of pregnancy, if uh, the virus transplacental transmit to the fetus, then the fetus will die and the fetus will get reabsorbed into the uh, uterus. Suppose the animal after um, artificial inseminations will show the sign of pregnancy, but again uh, the animal will return to the heat because of fetal death and reabsorption. Whereas at the later part of the uh, pregnancy, if uh, the virus transplacentally transmission of per ten, the mummification is the result. Okay, the, the fetus will die and they will become shrink and very become smaller. So there is no any infections we can see there. That's called the mummification. So uh, 
clinical symptoms, if we discuss in the peaks, obviously the first symptoms is the high rise of temperatures and then uh, those respiratory uh, sensor symptoms and the novel symptoms, excessive salivation, muscular spasm, incoordination. Basically, we see it in the uh, pellets, not in the adult. Uh, necrotic foca and liver, spleen, meningeal encephalitis, these are the different uh, conditions that uh, we could record. Uh, then, uh, as I said, that uh, this is also occurring in cattle. Please remember, this is a frequently asked question. Many times people have a misconception that the citorabies or all these cases occur only in the pig. No, the cattle are also equally uh, affected by these infections. And there we could see this neurological signs like bellowing, aimless staggering. That's why it's called a citorag or citolysa infection. And uh, all the signs of, of rabies, uh, we could see it in the uh, cattle, including the intense pruritus uh, that uh, causes severe itching uh, of the skin. Okay. So um, coming to the laboratory diagnosis, uh, that the history, clinical signs and symptoms, uh, uh, that of uh, high mortality in piglet and incoordination signs, along with high fever and respiratory uh, signs and symptoms. As you know, like in the rabies, we couldn't see any respiratory signs and symptoms. So, but here it is very prominent that we could record it. Uh, so that gives us some information. However, uh, obviously we have to go for the confirmatory detection based on antigen detection and antibody detection. So anti and the post-mortem samples, we can collect it. And uh, preferably the pieces of brain is uh, suggested uh, for uh, viral detections by uh, the fluorescent antibody test uh, and the uh, section, or can be used uh, for isolation of the virus. So uh, along with the primary uh, kidney cell culture, if you can remember in the initial uh, class, uh, part of this uh, herpes variety family, I mentioned that the herpes viruses, they preferred the uh, cell culture of their natural host origin. So this uh, virus, they prefer to grow in the uh, primary kidney cell culture, both the pig kidney as well as the bovine kidney. Besides, the Corellantric membrane route has also been tried and uh, the viruses produces pop. This is an exceptional thing. And that uh, diagnostically, this point is important for diagnosis of pseudorabies. So we had uh, uh, different recommended tests, including FAT. LAT is the latex agglutination test, a uh, uh, very uh, quick, uh, rapid uh, spot test. Uh, uh, it's called the latex agglutination test, which is uh, a licensed uh, test uh, for detection of the antigen uh, from these clinical samples can be used for um, virus detection. Besides the LI side, the standard test, uh, a lot of many LI kits are available for uh, antigen detection as well as the antibody detection, uh, which are pertinent for diagnosis of pseudorabies. So first, the molecular test is become very rapid and quick, as uh, all the times we mentioned. Uh, there are certain uh, laboratory animal tests, uh, which nowadays uh, nobody prefers or restrictions are there of using this rabbit as a lab animal for diagnosis purpose. However, this uh, intense pruritus bulbar paralysis can be uh, uh, developed by inoculating the clinical sample into the rabbit. But these uh, uh, animal models nowadays are no more uh, practically used for diagnosis purpose. Uh, the reason so is that we had a better taste for accurate diagnosis. So unnecessarily, we should not use this laboratory animal for diagnosis purpose. So uh, certain differential diagnosis with rabies and listeriosis. Listeriosis is very common in uh, sheep, goat, cattle, as well as the pig. So there also, you know, the listeria monocytogenes, they mainly causes uh, uh, the listerialization uh, O. Uh, it causes this kind of uh, lesions of nervine lesions. So have to be differentially uh, differentiated with those kind of uh, diseases. So controlling this infection, yes, uh, uh, different categories, including the recombinant uh, uh, micro vaccines, are also available in the international market. 
both live attenuated and inactivated vaccines are in use for uh, controlling the infection. So, um, yeah, some uh, more facts and uh, information so you can just uh, download it uh, from uh, CFSPH uh, website. So, I have given you a link there. That about this uh, pseudorabies infection. Now, coming to uh, uh, three more infections in all three, you are going to discuss it. Uh, uh, one is that uh, duct like infections under the herpes virus B, and this is an uh, under the alpha herpes virus uh, infections. The genus is Mardi virus, duct like. As you know, this uh, is a devastating uh, viral infection in duct. So when we talk about uh, the duck husbandry and the disease aspect when it is discussed and among the viral etiology, the duck plague um, is always kept in the priority. If you can remember, we also discussed about uh, a similar kind of disease uh, caused by the RNA viruses under the picornavirus family, um, the, the duck virus uh, hepatitis. Uh, uh, that is another highly fatal infection, but Basically, that the infections occur in the death links only. But here, the duct plague, uh, which is also called as duct virus enteritis, duct virus enteritis, is all these group of ducts are affected and the, uh, with high mortality and morbidity. Even the areas where the animals were never been vaccinated or where the first time the exposure takes place and the mortality may close up to 100%. All birds may die because of this uh, herpes virus infection. So, comparatively, this particular virus is uh, in comparison to the other uh, uh, herpes viruses, they uh, maybe uh, remain stable in the water bodies for quite a long period, and that is that uh, helps in transmission of the infection. And basically, uh, it has been seen that uh, in, in, in 1923, first time it was reported in, in Netherlands, uh, as well as in the USA uh, and, and New, New Island uh, uh, province, the first outbreaks of the plague uh, was detected. And thereafter, it has uh, uh, reported from all over the globe, particularly the Asiatic countries like in uh, People's Republic of China and Southeast Asian countries, including India, Bangladesh, everywhere the, the disease is rampant. I should say it's a rampant. Uh, every year, this disease causes a heavy mortality in uh, duck rearing states in India. So, this is really a matter of concern for all of us. So, this disease is very, very prevalent in our country. So, the positive organism is uh, an RT alpha herpes virus 1. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, uh, I think you can see the slide properly. Yes, sir. Where? Yeah. So, the cultive organism is an artid alpha herpes virus 1. This name, uh, you may find it uh, different from the textbook. These are all uh, as per the latest ICDB classification. Mm -hmm. They have been grouped under the genus Mardi virus and Anatid alpha herpes virus 1. Earlier it was called Anatid herpes virus 1. Now it is alpha herpes virus 1 uh, name has been given. So uh, the virus doesn't have uh, uh, any, any serotypes, only one uh, serotype, means antigenically the viruses are similar. So this is a positive point that we can develop some uh, good amount of vaccines against this uh, particular disease. And in fact, the effective vaccines is available and disease can be controlled, controlled very uh, efficiently by giving vaccination, right? But uh, as I said that uh, the nature of the herpes virus uh, make it difficult for eradication of the disease, okay? So, uh, this uh, virus, uh, mainly uh, uh, the clinical infections we could see in the domestic duck, they are necessarily susceptible. 
however, the uh, free range uh, geese and duck species, the wild ducks, so they are considered to be the main reservoir of the virus. They carry the intestines and they uh, contaminate the water bodies and in contact bird may uh, get the infection. This is one of the major way of uh, spreading the infection. The wild ducks and geese uh, goose carry this virus asymptomatically. Okay, and they uh, when they uh, say, uh, share the same water bodies with the domestic duck, then uh, they may set the virus and the domestic duck population. Okay. So once it uh, see in the domestic duck population, very rapidly in contact, the other birds will get the infections and throw um, contaminated food and water and uh, direct uh, uh, secretion, more particularly the respiratory secretion, as well as in the feces, the viruses are excreted and any in-contact bird may pick up the infection. So direct contact with infected bird is uh, another way of uh, spreading. So uh, if, you, if you try to see the uh, pathogenesis, again, this is uh, the viruses, they cause endothelial damage, and mainly the lymphoid uh, uh, cell-associated infections and viremia that occur. Uh, then uh, mainly the uh, uh, lymphoid populations uh, goes down because of this uh, infection and uh, the virus can initiate uh, endothelial damage, the vasculitis and widespread hemorrhages occur. This uh, widespread hemorrhages uh, goes up to such an extent that uh, we could see uh, the clotted blood accumulation in the body cavities. So all body cavities, maybe inside, inside the intestine, cause intestinal alteration, or maybe in the peritoneal cavity, in all body cavities, we could see the clotted blood formation and the extensive vascular damage that occur. And because of which we, we could see the mortality is very high, up to 100%, and all these groups are equally affected. It's not rustic, it's not that only in the that things. Uh, adults are not uh, susceptible. In adult also, the disease occur in the same intensity. So, for basically after three to seven days of incubation period, the bird initially shows the anorexia and then oblon adult discharges. Uh, uh, and some of the things very peculiar is that. Uh, uh, the duck, they prefer uh, the water bodies for swimming and uh, they feel happy going there. But if the birds are affected with the duck plague, they, they are uh, they're reluctant to go to the water bodies. Even it says that if you throw the bird, uh, duck, uh, infected duck to the water bodies, they will again come up. So a severe respiratory disease that leads to uh, uh, and uh, nasal beaches. The eyelids may stick because of uh, this uh, exudations that occur through the eyes, that means eyelid. Then a uh, photophobia, they prefer to hide in certain bushes somewhere in the corner place. Uh, they don't want to come to the sunshine. And then uh, the watery diarrhea. The, all the birds say so the what you diarrhea at this particular stage again uh, cell associated virus may cause uh, uh, cerebrospinal infection and they exhibit signs of neurological signs like ataxia paralysis of the wings and leg so finally lateral recumbency and uh, similar to that of the dark virus uh, hepatitis where the spasmodic paddling movement are exhibited here also we could see the same condition and the lateral recumbency the spasmodic um, paddling movement are exhibited by the duck and finally they die and the uh, mortality occurs at a very high rate many per ducks will die at the time so uh, the, the duck rearing uh, states, particularly the pockets, are, are the disease is very, very common. And probably some of you have seen this kind of um, death in the duck. So um, some of the more information about this uh, at the post -mortem, time of post-mortem, uh, what we will observe, the, the, the blood uh, clot in the body cavities, then in the intestines. So all intestinal lumen also, if you cut open, you can see some clotted blood in the gizzard, intestinal lumen. That is a typical sign. And um, you can see this eye pasting of the eyelids and the nostrils are uh, plugged with uh, the cirrhosis uh, uh, 
exudates. So these are some of the things. And uh, the time of postmortem, you can see some uh, necrotic uh, changes in the liver, particularly hepatical uh, necrosis. You can see on the liver surface. This is uh, what uh, is not really internuclear inclusions. Yes. Uh, typical inclusions of forms uh, inside the uh, infected uh, uh, hepatocytes. Probably this is the hepatocytes. So this is an uh, diphtheritic membrane, pseudomembrane, and the hemorrhages uh, we can see in the uh, intestinal epithelium, esophageal mucosa, and these are the uh, focal uh, necrosis we can see in the uh, liver as well as in the spleen. These are the, some ulcerated area in the intestines, uh, very frequently observed in this duct like infection. However, there are certain infections, including the Ranicate disease, sometimes it occurs in the ducts. Uh, we can confuse this with bacterial disease like uh, uh, salmonellosis or pasteurellosis. Uh, we can see a uh, similar kind of uh, lesions. So, uh, the, 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 uh, of course, the postmortem uh, observations are very peculiar. But uh, clinical manifestation uh, of uh, changes are not uh, very much specific for that, like other diseases also it offers. Uh, this is one histopathological section where showing this, uh, uh, that uh, sloughing of this mucosal epithelium in the cloaca. So now coming to the diagnosis. So the disease uh, diagnosis based on detection of the causative organisms by isolation and identification. So uh, the different samples, uh, like uh, the internal organ, like livers, uh, definitely we encountered a dead bird uh, that we collected. Uh, and the throat and the lung tissues we can collect it, or uh, spleens can be collected for uh, virus detection. So the virus can be uh, either isolated in the embryonic chicken egg by camera root of inoculations, where the crop lesions are formed. Uh, I'm ready to date with hemorrhages, this uh, changes we could observe it. And uh, the isolated virus can be detected with uh, a simple tests like AZPT, a little precipitation test, uh, uh, contraimine electrophoresis, fat, uh, we can perform it uh, for detection. So uh, the virus can also be isolated in the uh, cell, uh, cell culture, in the primary uh, dark uh, fibroblast cell culture. Uh, Dark embryo fibular cell culture, we can use it. Or certain cell line, like Muscovy duct cell lines, are available, which are frequently used for virus isolation for diagnosis, as well as uh, it is used for vaccine production. So uh, the viruses again typically produces the syncytial formation. This is common for all uh, herpes viruses. And total disruption of the cells takes place after 72 hours of infection. And the infected cells, the inclusions of the body can be detected by staining. So this is the approach uh, how we can isolate the virus uh, in both the system and by the chicken egg as well as in the cell culture. Then uh, the, the antigen and antibody detection, all these states, including the VNT, virus inflation based uh, perform. So any tighter of one is to eight then above is uh, considered uh, to be a positive uh, titer. Then the molecular techniques, we can use it. However, we have to go for differential diagnosis. Uh, uh, the, the, the duct hepatitis infection due to the piconovirus uh, that already we discussed it, basically it occurs in the duct link, but the clinical manifestation is almost similar with the duct link, okay? Uh, Pasurellosis, the bacterial infection, coccidiosis, Newcastle disease, as well as the influenza when it occurs in the domestic duct, the same intensity duct is to die. Uh, so some differential diagnosis is needed with this kind of uh, diseases. Now coming to the uh, prevention and control, uh, we had effective vaccine, cell culture adopted vaccines, uh, which can give very good protections against uh, uh, infection. And uh, these live attenuated vaccines are available in the market, and this is uh, mainly uh, inoculated by the subcutaneous uh, uh, or intramuscular root in ducting, so two, a, a two weeks of age. So the, the reasons of vaccinating the two weeks of age uh, is uh, that uh, the metal antibody uh, purchased 
uh, that particular period. And during that, if you give the vaccination, the vaccine will not be effective. So uh, 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 a smart idea will be vaccinating the flock uh, so that the metal antibody purchased and during that period, um, the vaccination can be given up to two weeks of days. So if you provide the, uh, the vaccines in the proper time, in the proper way, then definitely we can avert the uh, outbreak and can minimize the uh, outbreak, number of outbreaks every year. However, it is uh, not possible to totally eradicate the disease because we had a wildlife reservoir and this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, the wild bees and dark species they uh, harbor these uh, infections. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is the infectious uh, laryngotracheitis, uh, um, so we call the ILP infection, infectious laryngotracheitis, and uh, this. Uh, Okay, infectious learning uh, tracheitis. Uh, this particular disease again uh, has been recorded in 1923 in the USA and thereafter from all the uh, poultry producing countries the disease has been recorded. And uh, this is a uh, severe uh, respiratory tract infections uh, in poultry and uh, may cause mortality up to 60%, so it's another disease, 20 to 60% is the mortal direct. So it's a highly contagious uh, acute viral infections uh, that affect the respiratory tract. Uh, the infectious laryngotracheitis uh, is the conditions that we could see. And it is very much prevalent in India. So the positive organisms has recently been classified as the genus Pilto virus, infectious laryngotracheitis, ILP uh, genus under the alpha herpes virini uh, subfamily, and it is the Gallit alpha herpes virus uh, one. Okay, so uh, this is the positive organisms of uh, infectious laryngotracheitis. So the only one kind of the virus is circulating the population. So basically, it causes uh, laryngotracheitis, uh, and uh, uh, very typical symptoms that we could see in this uh, laryngotracheitis is the tracheal rails are produced. In subsequent slide, we'll see uh, because of the epithelial infection, sometimes the, the diphtheritic membranes are forms and they occlude the respiratory tract in chronically affected uh, bird. Mm, we can see some caseated mass that get deposited in the respiratory uh, tract, particularly in the uh, trachea. And then when the bird uh, take respirations, uh, whistling sounds are produced, tracheal rail is what we say. So it basically occurs in the fowls. So they are the natural host of infections. So mm, uh, all age group they are susceptible, but uh, the typical symptoms we can see in four to nine months uh, means adult birth that is uh, commonly seen. So here again, uh, no vertical transmission has been recorded by direct contact with the infected bird. Uh, uh, the disease transmission uh, occur. Uh, so. Coming to the pathogenesis, you'll find this uh, the virus, uh, they, 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 they mainly cause this upper respiratory tract infections and uh, their excessive uh, necrosis of the mucous membranes in trachea and larynx takes place. As I said, the diphtheritic membranes and pseudomembranes are produced because of the sloughing of this epithelial surfaces and they may uh, uh, block this uh, respiratory tract and uh, typically they uh, show some open mouth breathing conditions and during that breathing process whistling sounds are, are produced so um, we, here in this picture you can see this is a tracheal ring as uh, section here it is the hemorrhagic plugs are produced and it is caseated mass 
So the entire respiratory tract has been narrowed down in a very small uh, slits. As a result, when the bird uh, is finding it extremely difficult to breathe, and even the breath also, the whistling sounds are produced because of these lesions. This is another postmortem signs where you can see the entire um, of the trachea, the bronchus. You can see this blood clot may form, pseudomembranes can form. So thereby, they can cause. Uh, mm, respiratory illness. So this is another, the trachea, you can see the caseated mass of form uh, inside this uh, trachea. So the, the, the lacrimal secretions and others are, are common. And you know, sometimes when the bird dissects its head, there are some uh, uh, ropey exudates, blood stain ropey exudates. Uh, we can see it similar to that of the coriza infections, several coriza conditions we discussed in bacterial disease, also seen it here. So coming to the laboratory diagnosis, uh, clinical signs and symptoms, uh, of course, uh, some specific lesions we can see. Even it says that uh, before entering to the farm, uh, if uh, uh, large flocks are affected, the tracheal rails, uh, the whistling sounds, you can uh, listen from outside the farm premises. And that gives us some indication about the respiratory tract infection. So diagnosis is based on isolation and identification of the positive organisms, which can be done very simply by PCR, or we can go for isolation in embryonic chicken eggs. This kind of uh, pock lesion and stunted embryo growth takes place, as well as in uh, cell culture, primary cell culture, second embryo, kidney cell culture, you can use it, and the typical syncytia formation and inclusions can be demonstrated. So the demonstration of inclusions is also diagnostically important in, uh, from the tissue samples collected informally by each and each staining. So this is another aspect of the uh, LP uh, de uh, detection. So antigens, uh, the common test of FAT, ZPT, ELISAs uh, can be performed. Uh, however, the antibody tests uh, like uh, and the endemic area, this doesn't um, give much relevance, and even the vaccinations are carried out, so they cannot give much information. However, these detections, again, after the vaccinations are performed to find out the neutralizing antibody titer. So, uh, control of this infection is based on the effective vaccines, and the live virus vaccines are available. And they give us very good protections against this uh, disease. And basically, given by installation, just like that of the uh, Ranica disease, as well as the drinking water within seven days. Uh, and then if we give the second booster in dose at six to eight weeks, on revaccination at four to five months is suggested. And because uh, the disease uh, frequently we see in the um, adult uh, bird. So this kind of vaccination practice can uh, minimize the disease incidence. However, the problem is that uh, the recovered bird, say 20 to 60 percent of the mortality, the other bird will recover. So recovered bird may carry the infections. They may act as a uh, carrier. And because this is a common problem with all herpes infections, the latency uh, it may uh, occur. And at any point, they may revert back and uh, save the virus and become a source of infection for others. So complete depopulation of the infected flock, uh, all in all out practice, these are the uh, measures we need to take it for controlling the infection, okay? So, uh, then uh, the Marek disease uh, will continue in our next session. Thank you very much. Quickly, uh, I can pick up some questions. If you have, then uh, we are having two minutes time. Yes, uh, do you have any questions, anything? Uh, one of my special repeat all of you, uh, I'm going through this uh, uh, online exam answers, uh, but see, I don't know why all of you, most of you are doing simply from the Google, you're copying and pasting something very absurd um, answer, we are getting it. 
So please uh, don't practice step one. Try to believe yourself and whatever you have learned, whatever you have studied, keep faith on you. Okay. But a very ridiculous answer. We are getting it. And this is simply copied it from the Google page. So I don't know why people are doing like this way. So please uh, make your own notes and information and read it properly and definitely very easily you can score it. Any question? Okay then, thank you very much. I'm closing the link for today's course. Thank you, sir.